My first show is 12 days from today. So I gotta learn how to use the big boy gear ASAP. I fly in probably like four or five hours before the show starts. Do you think that's enough time for me to get acquainted with like the real, the real thing? Well folks, it's that time of year again. People are already making progress on all their New Year's resolutions. And it's just not fair, okay? I mean, it seems like before we even get one month into the year, people are already out here losing weight, learning new skills, overthrowing the government. But this year, to keep things a little more manageable, I decided to rein it in a little bit. And this year, I have but one New Year's resolution. I want to become a DJ. Now, the good news is, I essentially just need to learn how to push buttons good. And with a year to do it, I think I can pull it off. The bad news is I don't have a year. I have a little bit less than two weeks, actually. Now, fortunately, just for context, I do have some experience DJing, but it was with my own amateur gear and it was at free shows. So technically, I'm still not a professional DJ. This year, that was going to change. My first ticketed show is 12 days from today. And since I'm opening for one of the biggest DJs in my scene, I sure as hell am not going to show up with this amazing and incredibly thoughtful birthday gift from a few years ago. So I gotta learn how to use the big boy gear ASAP. So just out of curiosity, how much is one of those gonna run me? On eBay. Well, clearly I'm not gonna be able to get one of these unless I sell a kidney on the black market or something and I'm smart enough not to do that again. Clearly I'm gonna need some sort of expert opinion here, so I'm calling in a lifeline. I decided to hit up my good friend Backwin, who started DJing at college parties years ago, but has since worked his way up to playing gigs with huge artists all across the country. So when it came to learning the CDJs, what was your process for approaching that? Because I feel like that's kind of like a big step up from just like a dinky little controller that you plug into a laptop. You know? Yeah, you go from being able to see, you know, what's going on with the waveforms on top of each other to they're like split separate so you gotta do it by with your headphones to beat match it instead of like just looking at it so that's that's definitely the scary part that was the scary part for me but i would say you know keep it simple definitely to start keep it simple gotcha so i think i fly in probably like four or five hours before the show starts do you think that's enough time for me to get acquainted with like the real the real thing yeah and like like worst comes to worst you can do it at sound check there's an hour for sound check so right okay sweet dude I think you're gonna kill it and oh. I'm stoked for you to play the main room because it's gonna be it's gonna be popping Well, thanks so much for the words of wisdom and uh, We'll see you in two weeks. Yes, sir. Shout out purple posse. Shout out neon body day two I needed new gear and I needed it ASAP It was gonna take at least five days to ship from Amazon and I could even get two days shipping from Sweetwater But that gave me a better idea Sweetwater is actually headquartered like a two-hour drive from where I live. So I'm here with my wife, Haley. We're going to go check out their shop and see if they have any gear that kind of fits our needs. So um, I'll see you there. So after driving past Indiana's depressing rendition of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, we briefly passed through Silent Hill before arriving at Sweetwater HQ but more importantly, a place with a bathroom because I was about to piss my pants. We then made our way to the music store, which ended up being about 500% bigger than the last time I was there, like a few years ago. So we walked and we walked and we walked, and then in the very back corner, jackpot, lighting and live sound. The first thing that caught my eye was the most adorable little DJ decks I've ever seen. Bite size, go oh, bite size plates. But the gear at that table was either out of budget or not what I was looking for. This one on the other table seemed like it'd be a good fit, but these fine gentlemen were playing very copyrighted music at very high volumes right next door. So I decided to go acquaint myself with the stage instead to simulate the professional DJ experience. But before I could act like an idiot for too long, those guys had moved on to something else, so I took the opportunity to check out the gear I was actually interested in. The Pioneer DJ DDJ SR2 2-deck, my god, 2-deck Serato DJ Pro controller definitely seems a little pricey, all things considered, but it did seem like the best option that they had in stock. I think this one's the one, we just have to figure out how to buy it. Yeah, all they had in that room was the display model, and I couldn't find an employee, but I did find this very cool tree. Then I found an employee. Thanks, Tyler. I don't remember if that's his name, but he looks like a Tyler, like 100%. Hey, remember when I said I had to pick something up in person because of the whole two day shipping thing? Well, I picked it up two days ago and haven't even opened it yet, so uh... Here we are. 
All right. I got the lights to turn on. I'm basically a DJ now. Hey, get down. Listen, it's nearly impossible to get my cats to stop messing with the goddamn Christmas tree, but even that was like 10 times easier than getting this fucking DJ software to work properly. End it, end the task. Connection error. Hardware cannot connect to Serato DJ Pro. My guy, you're literally made for Serato DJ Pro. Now let's try again. Yes? Yes! Oh my god! Then, after that nightmare ended, I had to solve the age-old mystery of why can't I hear anything? As it turns out, pushing a bunch of random buttons doesn't tend to do much. I actually don't hear anything. But turning random knobs does. And with that, my first practice session was officially underway. Dude, the, the headphones are like half a second behind. It's like a speech, speech jam for DJs. 20 minutes and a few scuffed transitions later, things weren't looking great. All right. <laughs> a lot of my transitions are pretty scuffed. Guess I'll hope for a better day tomorrow. Then I took a day off, but to make up for it, I came back the next day and prepared myself by putting together an actual set list. For the most part, each track has a similar key and tempo as the surrounding tracks, so I'd really have to screw up the transitions for them to sound bad, right? Like I'd have to like accidentally leave the high pass filter on or something. Shit. But you know what? Other than that, I was kind of nailing it. Not bad. By now, you could tell I was very familiar with the equipment. This is a ripoff. Why can't I reset the tempo, man? Stop it. Just stop. Oh, wow. That was rough. We've got some work to do, and we're only a week out, so yikes. I took a couple days off to celebrate my success, and when I came back, I felt recharged and focused. Oh, God. What day are we on now? Day... Nine. By now... Shit, I was a natural. I'm so confused, I can't hear this track at all. Oh, there we go. But honestly, despite how chaotic this session was, the transitions were definitely sounding a lot better, so I couldn't complain. All right, I think the move here is to time my set now because I'm not actually sure if I'll even fit it into the 30 minute set, so why don't I have to sign in to the clock app? Let's do it. Forgot to start the stopwatch, so that's an L. Once I managed to actually get it started, the stopwatch actually told me that my set was a little too long. Wouldn't be the first time, am I right? Okay, 34 minutes. That's not too far off. Definitely gonna need to either cut a track or start making, start making the transitions. Start making the transitions faster. I didn't want to have to cut a track, so I came back the next day determined to tighten up the transitions. Why? Why do I need to verify my phone number for the clock app? I don't need any of this. Just give me the clock, bro. This session actually went pretty smoothly, so I don't really have anything funny to say, but enjoy more of this. Yeah, not bad, honestly. Passable, we'll say. That's passable. I'm honestly feeling pretty good, I say, as I can't get this to work. Oh. Once I remembered to actually plug everything in, things were pretty much going better than ever, until 28 minutes in when I realized I was supposed to call someone four minutes ago. Okay, we're flying out to Denver tomorrow, fingers crossed. And with just over 24 hours until showtime, I had finally pulled off a flawless set. Sweet, okay. Basically 30 minutes if you ask me. Generally no fuck ups in terms of the transitions, so now it's a matter of translating all of that knowledge to a totally different piece of equipment, so. As you can see, I was feeling super confident and not nervous at all. Then before I knew it, day 13 was here. Friday the 13th actually, so uh, so that's a good sign. We had some time before our flight, so I wanted to make one last post promoting the show. I needed a picture of me that said, look at me, I'm a DJ. Yeah, that'll work. So I posted the picture, the show flyer, and a snippet of my new song before we headed off to the airport right on schedule. Oh, missed my turn. By now it was like 3 p.m. and I was gonna have to stay awake for at least like 12 hours just to make it through my set. Some caffeine, gonna need these, cheers. But Friday the 13th be damned, everything was right on schedule. Until we got on the plane where we just kind of sat there for a while. Then this little guy pulled up and started spitting all over the plane and I think the plane kind of liked it. 
then about 40 minutes behind schedule, we finally took off. The flight gave me a couple hours to clear my head, so I was actually feeling pretty zen by the time we landed in Denver. Jesus Christ. And despite the crash landing, I was still feeling pretty good because we were about to meet up with my best friend, Nevin. I don't think I know how to use the payphone. <laughs> and I honestly wasn't feeling nervous at all until this happened. All right, so this is Corey. This is my agent, got me out here. Shout out Corey. So Corey, tell me what you just told me about the show. It kind of ups the stakes a little bit. Yeah, the show the show is nearing a sellout. Last I checked last night, we were at like 300. We got to get to about 350, so should be should be there soon. Yeah, I was still kind of processing that news when we pulled up at the Airbnb, which came equipped with fancy columns, some pickles in the fridge, and a boxing setup. You know, the bare essentials. Hello, I'm here at the ceremonious column to bring you some good news. We're sold out. The venue just posted this. Not shitting my pants right now. This is the face of someone shitting their pants right now. So we re-upped on caffeine and added some sugar packets for good measure. Uh, scam much? Here, let me help you out. We're on sugar packet number... 10. 10. What's the final verdict? 10? 10. Juiced up and ready to go, we headed to the venue for sound check. Dude! Dude, I'm on TV! Sh should we go in? We walked in and lo and behold, there it was. The Pioneer CDJs. This was my first and only chance to practice on the real thing before my set and doors were gonna open in like 30 minutes so I really couldn't afford for anything to go wrong at this point. So I walked up there, plugged in my flash drive and nothing happened. Hey, uh, Phil. None of my music was showing up and the clock was ticking. With no other options, Corey and I went backstage and tried plugging the flash drive into his laptop. Now I was really sweating. If my music didn't even show up on there, I mean, I was just shit out of luck. Yeah, it looks like we got all, we got of all the tunes. So Sweet. Not Thank God my music was at least showing up on the laptop. So we just reformatted the flash drive, put the music back on it, and it worked like a charm. That left me with about 15 minutes to practice with this gear for the first and only time. 15 very short minutes later, I hopped off the decks so the show could start. And over the course of the next hour or so, people just started flooding in. It was awesome. Those guys up there were doing such a good job, it almost made me forget that later that night, that was gonna be me up there, and I was gonna have to do that. Like, holy shit. Then all of a sudden, we're moving on to the next set. So the DJ before me walks up there, and now it's real. Like, I'm not just drinking and having fun at this point. I am lightly bobbing my head while looking for DJ tutorials in the club. But seriously, all jokes aside, I was way less prepared than I should have been. And the reason why is so unfathomably stupid. Like, I am legitimately embarrassed that I didn't realize this until I had less than an hour left. Wow, this is fucking bright. So, uh, I thought I had a 30 minute set, but I can't read. So I have an hour. Beck, say yeah, what's up. 30, 30. <laughs> yeah, so, uh... I guess I'll just fucking freestyle for half an hour. We'll figure that out. Yeah, it turns out I had completely misread Corey's text from a week ago saying that my set was an hour long, not 30 minutes. And this was it. This was the moment I realized it was Friday the 13th. Shout out, Von Storm. And then I blinked and all of a sudden it was time for me to go up there and play my set, my hour long set. What's good, Denver? I bought myself some time by kind of blabbering into the mic for a little bit, but eventually I put down the mic, threw on the headphones, I'm not really sure why, I definitely didn't need them at that point, and pressed play. Well, there was no going back now. There were 350 people out there that I had to entertain for the next hour. I will say though, it's kind of nice that you can't really see shit when you're up there. Like, as far as I could tell, the only thing in the room was me, the first couple rows of people, and this big fucking box in front of me with a bunch of knobs and lights on it. So, honestly, it was kind of easy to just zone in, kind of try to figure out the gear, and really focus on nailing the transitions. And I really couldn't get over how cool it felt to just play my music live. I mean, that, that is just the coolest shit ever. And obviously it helped that I could kind of just take my time now that I wasn't limited to 30 minutes. I mean, look at this guy. This man's just been sitting there counting beats for like 10 seconds. But that's okay. That gave people plenty of time to meet each other, chit chat, point at their favorite DJ in the whole wide world. But I wasn't going to be their favorite for very long because now I was at the end of my set list and I still had 22 minutes left to fill. I was panicking and I did not have much time. One stupid, careless mistake was about to completely jeopardize my set, my professional DJ career, and most importantly, my 2023 New Year's resolution. So what did I do? Well, to answer that, we actually got to go back all the way to day one. You see, back one actually gave me a piece of advice that would end up saving my ass at the last minute. Like, what's your philosophy when it comes to organizing a set list? Yeah, I would say definitely keep, you know, a big playlist or something to where you can 
kind of go with it on the fly because you never know. For me, honestly, I just, I, you know, do it on the fly. Okay, sick. And you know what's crazy? I made a whole ass set list because I was like, man, there is no way I'm going to be able to just walk up there like him and freestyle when I've never touched the gear before. But let me tell you, if he hadn't mentioned having just a big playlist on his flash drive, then I wouldn't have done the exact same thing and I wouldn't have been able to just queue up some of those songs and absolutely crush the last 20 minutes of my set. People didn't really seem to notice. I mean, I just kind of kept everything around the same tempo and messed around with the effects knobs when I got bored. And before I knew it, someone actually told me my time was almost up. So I queued up the last couple songs and they were around the same tempo. So of course the crowd was digging it. Then Ryan, the headliner showed up and he was vibing to it. So it was just a great time and a great crowd. And ultimately I ended up walking off stage feeling way better than I did when I walked on. Well, I did it. I'm very sweaty, but I did it. I freestyled half my set. Or did I? I mean, the only way to find out for sure is to check out the full stream on Ryan's YouTube channel. So when you're done here, go do yourself a favor. To celebrate my New Year's, to celebrate the show, we headed to the after party where we found some really cool knickknacks. Yo, we got the Celestron Omni XLT 150. But even the Celestron Omni XLT 150 could not keep my eyes open because by now it was like 5 a.m. my time and 10 sugar packets can only get you so far. We're lame. We're leaving early. So I got some sleep, and soon enough, day 14 was here. But to me, it felt more like day one. They want to be a professional goddamn DJ. So yeah, despite some minor uh, oversights on my part, we managed to actually pull it off, thanks to the sage wisdom of back when. So if you want to see the rest of our conversation that ended up saving my ass at the last minute, you can go check out the full interview on my Patreon, where you can also listen to my set and check out the track list. And full disclosure, I know Cody Co. also did a very similar video to this recently, so uh, definitely go check that out if you want to see somebody do this on easy mode. I mean, he had help from Dylan Francis, the Michael Jordan of DJ. So, I should have said Shaq. Fuck. I also want to give a huge shout out to everyone who helped me pull this together. Um, Haley, Nevin, Corey, Beck, The Black Box, Devin and Wynn, Escape, Ryan, y'all killed it. And thanks to all 350 of you who showed up and helped us sell out. I mean, you guys literally were the life of the party. I mean, can we get a round of applause for the audience? I mean, yeah. Yeah. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Join the Discord if you want to stay in touch. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.